Hello and welcome. Thanks for popping into my channel. If you are new here, please like and subscribe for me. If you find this content helpful, hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. Comment below with anything that you need help with or topics you'd like me to cover and check out my website consultingninja.tech. With that out of the way, let's get to it. We are looking at Svelte Bind. And I have to admit that when I first read this, I read it and then I reread it and was still scratching my head trying to figure out what the heck is going on here and how is this even helpful? Kind of was wondering like, I don't get what the big deal is. Let's get into a sandbox here and play around with it and hopefully this will help you to understand it. What I have here is you can ignore this import for now. We're going to get to that. That's where things actually become interesting. We have a form. Actually, we have two forms and they're identical. And what we have here is this is kind of the way you would do things in your form if you had like controlled state. So you could say let value we started as the empty string and then the value here is value. Okay, that all looks good. Well, if I type in one, nothing happens in the other one, right? They're completely separate. If I were to bind them, if the property equals the same thing, you can actually shortcut this. So let's just do bind value. And that's the same as doing this. Same thing, functionally the same thing. We can get rid of that. Don't need to start with this empty string. And now when I type in one, well, that's interesting. Okay, so you can keep two inputs in sync, but still I was left desiring more. I'm like, what's the, what's the point here? And the documentation says, data ordinarily flows down from parent to child. The bind directive allows data to flow the other way. I started playing around with this. Here is where it gets cool. So let's say we had this other form in another component. Yeah, let's just say that. And I'll get rid of this one. Or actually, I can, I'll leave it there. I'm going to leave that one there. And then I'm going to add this component to component to like that. Now I'm importing it up here. If we look at component two, all you'll see here is this is how you define a prop. So I'm saying we're going to have a prop of value on this component. And then I have the exact same thing. I've got a form with a name and an input, a label of name and an input, and I'm just doing the bind value on that, okay? Seems pretty straightforward. I'm like, okay, so this is supposed to let data flow both ways. So here we'll do value equal value. And you'll see, holy crap, this actually works. But wait a minute, it works one way, but not, what's going on here? And this is where I was, uh, the documentation, I feel they should clarify this. You must also bind this one. And now you type in any of them and the communication really is two way. So this component two has its, its value bind and the value is coming from that prop. And when I update that one directly, typing in that third input, it is the data is flowing back up to this parent app.svelte and populating these two other inputs. Now we're starting to get somewhere. Now this is where things get interesting. It's like, oh, okay, okay, this is this now. Now we can actually do something here. In React, there's no way you can you can kind of fake some, you know, upwards communication where you pass down a setter. You know, you could pass down your set state, but not two-way communication like this. And you'll notice there's not even a function. There's no function. I'm not defining a function that's setting anything. There's no function where I'm setting one and then the other. The browser is kind of doing that for me. I'm just saying, hey, bind all three of these values together. And Svelte does it underneath the hood, man. It's so cool to me. So that's pretty, pretty awesome. Pretty awesome stuff. The other thing that, that where this becomes powerful is combining this with the other pieces of Svelte. You also can have in here a reactive statement that is taking that value. Let's do the old doubled and have this value times two. We'll just have this be, uh, we'll change these to numbers. Number, number, and we'll change this one to number. 
and then in our app.svelte up at the top here I'll just do a h2 and say doubled here because we, we don't want to be doing multiplication on something that doesn't even know what it is let's start it at zero now now you can see we're combining this upwards flow of data with a reactive statement to powerful effect now I get that this is a basic example but if your mind is not racing right now with the things that you can accomplish with this well I just can't fix that for you <laughs> but this is so cool right we have data from this child component coming back up to the parent and then using this simple reactive statement it's watching that value and doubling the value here so I can change that one and it stays in it stays in sync so we have child component passing data back up and then the parent reactively using these reactive statements try to say reactively 10 times really fast so we have this child component updating the data passing it back up keeping its parent in sync and now we can also combine that with this reactive statement so when that value changes we can do some other stuff i hope that you're seeing how powerful and valuable this is i want to give you guys a few other examples of some cool bindings or how this might be helpful so something else that you can do that's pretty interesting here is you can bind to an object so let's fire up an object like this an empty object and then inside of our uh, JSX here we can do something like this bind value equal to object dot value and if I bind it on the other ones the same way like that Now you can see that this all works the same as far as functionality, but now the Svelte compiler is binding those to this object for me automatically. So those will be stored in the object as object property value like this, and this would be a number. So that's pretty cool and helpful because you can then do stuff with this object. Okay, so one other cool thing that I want to show you with binding before we end this video is you can bind a reference. So in the top of my app, I just added a let element. It is currently at undefined. And then I removed the doubled out of this h2 and I did a bind colon this equal to that element. And then I'm passing it as a prop to component 2, bind element is assigned element and then inside of component 2 here I do my export let to get the prop and then I've added a function I've added a button that has a function on click called fun and when I when I click that button it's going to take the element and set the inner HTML so I hit the button and the h1 that lives in the parent now gets Bob Ross inside of the uh, inner HTML. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, a few different ways of binding, a few helpful ways of binding. Uh, we bound a property, we bound a, a reference, and we bound to an object as well. I hope that you guys have found this video helpful. If you did, please give a like and subscribe for me. That would really help the channel. Hit that thumbs up button as well. And as always, have a great day.